Hello, everybody! It's me, Shannon Love Ruvier, and I am live and loving it tonight. It is Sunday, September 22nd, 2019, and I welcome you to Sunday Night Live, where we learn how to thrive in change. So glad you're here. Chris, I'm glad you're here. Good to see you. Awesome. Tonight we're going to be talking about something that many of us have experienced, but not all of us have identified. And if I had to bet, I would bet that there are a lot of people that you see in your life that you say, oh yeah, this fits them. But it's a little more difficult when we're looking at ourselves, right? Dawn, I'm glad you're here. Welcome. Thanks for jumping on. Awesome to have you. Sherry, glad you're here. Oh, this is gonna be a fun night, I can tell already. I'm so glad you're here. So before we jump into the topic, I just want to let you know that our October Mastermind on Sunday mornings is part of the live stream leadership series. Our October Mastermind is going to be leading through challenging times. Sometimes those challenging times we come up against as leaders are times of financial crisis, Maybe it is you're moving locations, so you're taking a group and you're trying to make them all happy about traveling across town and changing their commute and upsetting where they eat their lunch. Uh, sometimes it's big, big issues with leadership where you have to bring in other people that are going to be leading or managing, and sometimes people don't have an easy time going along with that. So our October Mastermind, in the live stream leadership series is going to be leading through challenging times. Whatever challenging time you're facing as a leader, this is going to equip you to do it well, to do it with grace, and you're gonna have a whole lot of great brains in the game with you. So Shelly, I'm glad you're here. Jason, I'm glad you're here. Carol, I'm glad you jumped on. We are getting ready to start tonight's topic. So. Show of hands, how many of you saw my Facebook post from last week that involved, let's just say it was a dishwasher and a mobile phone? It was my dishwasher and it was my mobile phone and it is what will forever be recorded in the annals of history as the dishwasher incident because I ran my cell phone through the dishwasher almost made it to the dry cycle before I rescued that thing. And it was a big deal. I had loaded the dishwasher. I had on a, a hoodie sweatshirt with those little half pockets. <laughs> yeah, Carol knows what I'm talking about. Had a little hoodie sweatshirt with um, those little half pockets. And I had my phone in one pocket and I had leaned down and had been loading the dishwasher. Got up, shut the dishwasher, and then I gathered all my supplies. I got my tablet, I got my Apple Pencil, I got my cup of coffee, and I'm getting ready to go into the office to start working for the day, and I realized I don't have my phone. So I looked in all of the normal spots. Um, I look in the laundry room, because I had been in there doing some work, so I checked and made sure, nope, it's not there. I went and looked on my nightstand, it's not there. I looked in the pocket of my robe, it wasn't there. I looked in the bathroom. Don't judge me, you take your phone in the bathroom. <laughs> but it wasn't there either. So couldn't find my phone. And as soon as I looked in all of my likely spots, I had this nagging thought and it said, you should check the dishwasher. And so I ignored it. And I told myself, and I did this full out, nah, I'm not gonna check the dishwasher because the dishwasher's running and it might make a mess when I open the door. So just between you and me, I'm gonna give you a little bit of just honesty right here. I have opened the door of that dishwasher for ridiculous reasons, all of them far less important than my cell phone. I have opened the dishwasher to put in a spoon that was in the sink that I thought needed to be washed right away, so I'd open up a running dishwasher, throw the spoon in. I have opened up the running dishwasher to pull out a spoon that I knew I had to have and I couldn't use another one, so I would open it up, reach in, I've opened that dishwasher for ridiculously small reasons. At the time though, I believed what I told myself. And Jason, you go ahead and laugh because it was sort of funny. It was funny. Um, however, 
I finally, after spending an hour and 10 minutes searching high and low for my phone, came to the conclusion I couldn't put it off anymore. Larry, I'm glad you jumped on. I don't think I've seen you here live before, so thank you for joining us. I finally decided after over an hour of searching high and low, wasting my time, that I would, yes, check the dishwasher, open it up, and right there in the corner, I have photographic evidence, was my cell phone. So, I kind of laughed about it. I was kind of disgusted. Um, it didn't work right. It works better now, and I'm using it now as a matter of fact, but I mean, it's not perfect, and I can't use the touch thumb thing anymore and I can't um, I can't use the speaker anymore there's it's got issues okay so I paid a price for leaving it in the dishwasher I can say this it was really really clean okay we'll say that much Missy I'm glad you're here thanks for jumping on so the dishwasher incident brings me to tonight's topic and at first I thought it was going to be our intuition, how important it is to trust our intuition. And then when I started looking just a little bit more, oh, Melissa Burr Silver, I'm glad you're here. When I looked at that topic just a little bit more, I realized something that blew my mind. I don't need to talk about intuition. I need to talk about sabotage. Sabotage. Because I sabotaged myself by not listening to my intuition. We're going to talk about a couple of kinds of sabotage tonight. The first one is when we ignore that voice of reason inside of us, or sometimes it's the voice of crazy inside of us that we choose to just disregard because we think that's just, no, I don't, I don't want to do it, not going to do it, or sometimes like all the, all the girls in the Haunted House movies, which I never watch because I can't stand scary movies, but um, all the girls in the Haunted House movies that, you know, are alone in the house and the phone rings and, and they answer it even though they've got a funny feeling like it might be a killer on the other end or they go to the door and let in the strange man. Their intuition, they're disregarding it. So we sabotage ourselves by not listening to our intuition. And then the other thing we're going to take a look at is something that I call call OLAS. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. It's O-L-A-S-S. -S. So OLAS, which is rampant in our society, uh, something we need to talk about. So let's start with the part about intuition. Did you ever wonder why you keep shooting yourself in the foot? Did, it, did you ever wonder why do I keep doing the same thing over and over and over when I know it doesn't work out. Why do I keep staying up until three in the morning when my gut is telling me you need to go, med go to bed at midnight because you've got an early day tomorrow? Why do I keep doing that? Why do I keep over and over and over getting hired into the wrong kind of a company with the kind of boss that I hate? Why does that happen? Why do I keep ignoring that little voice that says, yeah, you don't want to do that? Have you ever wondered? Well, I have a possible answer. In fact, I have an almost certain answer. I want to suggest that the reason that we don't listen to our intuition is because of fear. It's because of fear. We are afraid, Jason says, bad trigger control. Ah, oh, hi, Jerry Holland, I'm glad you're here. Fear is so often the culprit when things aren't going wrong. In fact, one of my favorite uh, business writers, thought leaders, Seth Godin, has this to say. He said, when things aren't going right, look for the fear. It's almost always fear. Ask yourself the next time you're getting ready to do that thing that your instinct's telling you, don't do it. Ask yourself, what am I will happen if I do it. It might seem like such a weird accident that I dropped my phone into the dishwasher and that part was an accident but the part of me refusing to get it out that was another thing entirely and so I want you to to hear what I'm saying here because what I realized when I was talking to one of my coaches because I have one I have more than one actually I, they're just super valuable 
I was talking to one of my coaches talking about the dishwasher incident and all of a sudden as we were talking she's asking me questions it occurred to me what was happening I ignored the little voice that said Shannon go get your phone out of the dishwasher I ignored that voice because I didn't want my phone because I was putting off a phone call that I needed to make and it was pretty much flat-out dread of making this phone call and I won't go into the details of it but let me just say that you would probably think that is ridiculous that's an easy phone call to make but for me I was worried enough about making it that I was willing to sacrifice my phone in a dishwasher so that I didn't have to do it. It is amazing the links that our unconscious will go, our lizard brain, and we've talked about that before, that part of us that wants to keep us safe, that doesn't want us to change, that wants to make sure we stay in this safe box. It is incredible the links that our lizard brain will go to keep us from doing that thing that we'd rather not do. Even if the thing is something that's good for us and awesome. So this is what I'm suggesting. Suggesting when you are sabotaging yourself by not listening to your intuition, not doing what your gut's telling you, you know the right thing. You go the opposite direction. You pick the wrong woman. You go to the wrong place. You invest in the wrong stocks. All of those things. Ask yourself this question. What am I afraid will happen if I listen? What are you afraid will happen if you actually listen to that voice? In the case of the young girls in the haunted house and answering the phone and, you know, picking up the creepy hitchhiker, a lot of times what we're afraid of is what will people think the peer pressure of the people that we think matter. They might not matter at all. They certainly may not have our best interests at heart. And yet, there's something about us that says, I'm gonna ignore what I know is good so that I'm not embarrassed, so that I don't have to maybe explain myself. And Dawn, I'm glad you're here. Nina, so glad you're here. Yeah, so if you sabotage yourself by not listening to that voice that you know better than to ignore, you disregard it, you leave your phone in the dishwasher, ask yourself this question, what am I afraid will happen if I actually listened to that voice? We've been talking about this for the past couple of weeks. Choice is a function of awareness. If we don't ask ourselves the question, we won't know. We won't know what's going on, but now you do. Now you do. Now you know when you've got that nagging feeling and you're getting ready to run in the opposite direction, ask yourself the question, what am I afraid will happen if I listen to that voice? If you walk into your company every day and hate it, and there is this voice inside of you that says, you know what, there's something better. It's this isn't it. This isn't it. I know there's something better. I know there's something better. Your intuition is speaking to you loud and clear. Your lizard brain is saying, oh no, that's ridiculous. This is a pension. This is security. You've always worked here. You can choose because you're aware now of that fear when it shows up, when it's trying to talk you out of what your gut's telling you to do. You are able now, because you're aware, take a look a little bit deeper. You can ask a friend. If you see a friend getting ready to do that thing that they have said, I don't want to do. I never want to do this again. And yet, they're doing it. Ask them this question. What are you afraid will happen if you just listen to your intuition? I'm not saying that we have to always believe our gut um, because Lord knows that sometimes, especially if we've, um, if we've got some dysfunctional habits happening, um, a lot of times our gut maybe isn't leading us in the right direction. But I am saying this. If you're disregarding it and your results are bad, Maybe it's time to start listening, and maybe it's time to find out why you're not. Once I was aware of the price that my lizard brain was willing to pay to keep me from making the phone calls I needed to make, it was so much easier to sit down and say, okay, what am I afraid will happen? 
And then reason kicks in. Your lizard brain isn't in charge anymore. You can reason and say, huh, is that a reasonable expectation? Do I actually think that's what's going to happen? Or is that just me trying to say stay safe? What exactly am I risking? We sabotage ourselves when we don't listen to what our gut and our heart is telling us we should do. We have to at least listen. We have to at least listen and not be afraid to say, hmm, what am I afraid would happen if I actually do it? As all of you know by now, I'm a Christian and I believe that I am filled with the power of God. How much more reason do I need to listen to my intuition, right? Oh my gosh, God's not going to send me a postcard. Well, he might. He, if, you, if he has sent you a postcard, that is awesome. And that is the power of the mail. So I'm in support of it. Uh, but in all seriousness, when we ask God to tell us things, we ask God for answers. We say, oh man, I just need to know. How do we think he's going to tell us? One of the ways he tells us is to drop that in our spirit. Our intuition speaks up and says, hmm, maybe that's the way we ought to go. Always listen to that voice. You can always choose to ignore it, but make sure you're not ignoring it out of fear. I cost myself several days of effectiveness, not just in returning phone calls, but a whole bunch of other things that I relied on my phone to do. And my lizard brain was willing to sacrifice it so that I didn't have to make a phone call. And it was like a light bulb turned on when I realized, oh my gosh, I sabotaged myself by letting my phone stay in the dishwasher when I knew it was there. I knew it. So there you have it. So that's one of the ways that we sabotage ourselves. Have you ever done that? Have you ever not listened to your intuition and then realized, oh my gosh, if I had just done what I thought, I would love to hear how you deal with your intuition. Do you listen to it? Do you act on it? Or do you ignore it and think that is crazy? Um, I would love to know how you approach your intuition because I am learning to lean on mine more and more and more. And Jerry Hound says, yes, yes. When we've got God, we aren't in a place where we have to say all the time, I, I, need, to, I need to check 500 sources. Sometimes we can just listen to that voice and go, huh, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Thanks. Thank you. I asked and I received. I got the answer. Let's move on. Always, always, always give yourself the choice of being aware. All right. So the next thing, the next thing that a lot of times causes us to sabotage ourselves is what is commonly known as Olas. Michelle, hi. Hey, by the way, when I say I was working with my coach and I got this great awareness about the dishwasher incident, um, Michelle Burkhardt is my coach and she's an awesome one. So I highly recommend her. Some of you I know on this uh, Facebook Live have actually worked with Michelle. Um, she's just a huge blessing. So there you have it, Michelle. Mwah, I'm glad you're here. All right, so Olas, you may not um, have heard it called that, uh, but I know you're familiar with it. It is this, oh look, a squirrel syndrome. Oh, loss. oh look, a squirrel syndrome. Many of the people that I work with suffer from OLAS and it is debilitating. And this is what it does. It causes people who are on the track of success to stop in their tracks and go in a different direction. Another way to put that, quitting. <laughs> quitting. Quitting too soon. What are you working on that just when it's time for your hard work to pay off, you decide, eh, I don't want to be a real estate agent anymore. I think I'm going to go over here and be a dental hygienist. Or I want to go sell new homes. Or maybe I'll go be a hairdresser. I know somebody who has done most of those things, by the way, for just this long. 
never quite got their certification, never quite finished all the hard work that it took to get there. Oh, las, oh, look, a squirrel. This is one of the ways that we sabotage ourselves. We aren't patient with ourselves as we're learning to do something new, and then we quit. But I have a solution for you, and you are not going to be surprised at what it is. Look for the fear. What are you afraid will happen if you stay the course? Why is it so tempting to quit just before the finish line and run off to do something else? I suggest to you, it is fear. Now, I can't tell you what your fear is. But I can tell you the fears that I've experienced personally. I've been afraid of being found out to be a fraud. I've been afraid of finding out, not that you would find out that I'm a fraud, because I, at times, sadly, harbor the fear that you already know I am. <laughs> but the imposter syndrome's for another time. I'm afraid that I'll find out I'm a fraud. If I'm finished, if I've got that degree, if I've finished that certification, if I've put myself 100% into that business, that project, that restaurant, whatever it is I'm working on, if I put myself 100% into it and it doesn't work, what is that going to do? That strikes fear in our hearts. That strikes fear in our hearts. But if we know it, we can address it because awareness brings choices. And we can choose to take a look at what we're getting ready to do and say, what is it that's making me shift? What am I afraid will happen if I became that successful realtor? If I became that successful, successful restaurateur? If I became that successful public speaker? Because sometimes we're afraid that we're not gonna be able to do it and we'd rather have the excuse that we didn't have that certificate or we never did finish. We'd rather have that because that feels safer. We've all known people that we see them jump. Oh, loss. oh look, a squirrel. They jump and they jump again and they jump again and they jump again. And so many of my clients, that's what brings them to me. They say, I never get anything accomplished. I'm sick of spinning my wheels. I'm sick of moving but not getting anywhere. It's because we're sabotaging ourselves by bam, bam, whoo, ah, I've got to do this. I've got to do this. I'm way too busy to finish X, Y, Z, the thing that would actually get us closer to our dream. We build our excuses because of fear. We sabotage ourselves because we're afraid of something. So as we wrap up tonight's Sunday Night Live, I want you to know a couple of things. The first one is you are not alone. The fear never goes away. It never goes away. But we can learn to deal with it and move past it. Thank you, fear, for showing up. Thank you for trying to show me something that you thought I didn't know, but I do not know, I do understand, and I'm going to ask you to step aside. I'm going this way. We get to choose when we're aware of the fear. Self-sabotage, not listening to our good intuition that's trying to guide us in a way that's healthy and profitable and productive. Self-sabotage, where we distract ourselves with so many projects or so many pursuits that none of them are ever done well. The jack of all trades, the master of none. But we build ourselves an excuse. Well, you know, I'm pretty good at this. And I'm pretty good at that. And I, you know, I'm all right at that. I just, you know what, I just never, you know, get a chance to really get great at it. Why not? Why not? When we're aware that it's actually fear that's causing ourselves to cut our dreams off, to sell ourselves short, to actually allow our telephones to go through dishwashers so that we don't have to make the calls that we need to make to move our business forward to the next level. As I raise my hand, it was me, right? When we know what it is, why we're sabotaging ourselves, we can choose to address it and do it differently.
So those are your two things. Sabotage, my friends. Ignoring your intuition and succumbing to Olas. Jason says this. Let's see what Jason says. Anxiety and fear in my life isn't so much what might be, but what I've actually experienced. Jason, that is valid. And the things that you've actually experienced, those things that happened in the past, um, and I know you know this to be true, Jay, um, that's where counseling helps us. Counseling helps us with those experiences and traumas that we've had in our past that cause us to fear what's happening ahead. But for some of us, those of us who haven't had trauma, that we are actually just building ourselves a system that we don't have to prove ourselves in, so we sabotage it, that's a different thing entirely. And that's actually, you bring up a great point, that's actually one of the great differences between coaching and counseling. And I have taken part in both for many, many years. Uh, counseling works on what happened in the past. What's back there that I'm still carrying, the burdens that are weighing me down? Counseling can help us to deal with that trauma from the past. And coaching helps us to plot our course for the future and move forward minus those burdens that we've set down with the help of a, a trained professional. And we can set our course for our success. And coaching helps people remove those roadblocks, find those fears, identify if they're legitimate or not, and then readjust so that we can keep moving forward. So thank you for sharing that, Jay. That's valid and um, I can appreciate it. Dolores, I'm glad you're here. Pat McDuff, I'm glad you're here. We had some other people pop on, I thought. Let me see what we got here. Oh yeah, uh, we, have, uh, we have Missy Sin. She loves Michelle, she does. M Missy has worked with Michelle and she's great. Um, anything else, you guys? What are you thinking as I'm talking about sabotaging ourselves? Where do you sabotage yourself? Maybe this is a little bit too public of a forum for you to share it. Um, but if you feel like sharing, I'd love to know, where do you sabotage yourself? Where, where have you identified, where are you aware that you're letting your fear interrupt you, distract you? or actually damage important office devices to prevent you from making the changes you know you wanna make. I would love to hear about them. With that, I'm gonna close for tonight. You guys are amazing. I am so honored every time I see you pop in, say hi, leave your comments. Um, it's my heart to add value to you, uh, and it makes my day, makes my week when I know that I have. God bless you all. Mwah! I love you and have a fantastic week. Bye-bye.